name's still Daniel. I still got an AR, and I'm still with Gun Mag Warehouse. You get all your great magazines at gunmagwarehouse.com right now. Uh, if, if you've ever shot a lot with an AR, ran guns a lot, you ran into some of these stoppages that we've covered. One we haven't covered so far is your failure to eject your stovepipe. Uh, one way I was brought up uh, in the Marine Corps uh, running stovepipe drills was we would take a spent casing and we would have a round of the chamber like I do right now and we would stick a spent casing inside there and let it go back forward. What I just did right there was absolutely nothing. This does not exist. If you think about this, that round in the chamber right there is engaged on the extractor, right? That extractor is holding onto it. For that to happen, that means it has to have been chambered. For that, if that has to have been chambered at some point, all the way in there, how would it have possibly caught that round? We can't keep catch a round and send the bolt forward and, and chamber around and catch around at the same time. It's physically impossible to, for this to occur during firing with that round the front round going in the chamber connected to the extractor. Now I could have this same thing kind of happen with the round sitting in the chamber but not connected to the extractor but not like it is set up right here. How do I clear this stoppage? Well since it's not a real stoppage it's pretty easy. If I rack the charging handle that round is caught on the uh, extractor so it's just going to eject both rounds very easily. Not a big deal at all because it's not a real stoppage and clearing stoppages that aren't real are pretty easy. Where's my piece of brass? There it is. How this stoppage really goes down, what they really look like, is you've got a piece of brass inside of here, and if I were to do this and, and pull that in there and hit my bolt release, now I've caused what's more like a double feed. See how it's stuck in there? That double, it's, it, or not a double feed, I'm sorry, uh, a failure to eject or um, a stovepipe. They're usually trapped where that round's trying to go in and it's called, they're pushing against each other. These rounds are, a lot of frictions there. If I lock this bolt to the rear here, and see, it kind of wanted to jiggle on me, so it's a little tight, not, not too tight right now. I dropped that magazine out of the gun. They usually sit there. It stays there. This is where the whole idea comes in where we should turn the gun over on our side and karate chop it. Personally, I am not a fan of karate chopping hot, hot sharp things. Not something that I do. What I do is this very technical term. Uh, you have to pay close attention. I, I take my little uh, index finger, make a little square, and I use my thumb, and I put these next to each other and jiggle. Whether it's this hand I'm using or this hand I'm using, I'll just jiggle it back and forth. You, sometimes one time's all it takes. Sometimes you gotta go back and forth because it's really tight in there. That next round falls out, maybe or maybe not. You may have to bolt forward, metal on metal, and then reload the gun. Uh, but that little stoppage I set up at the beginning, not a real stoppage, guys. That's not a stovepipe. That's uh, me setting up something for a range theatrics that doesn't actually exist. Uh, if I wanna make a real stovepipe, I need to take a piece of brass. In this case, because I don't see one right here, I'll take a live round, which isn't realistic. You gotta put it in your mouth. It's like part of the thing. Put a magazine in the gun, push that piece of brass, in this case a live round, but we're gonna pretend like it's brass. Bolt release, boom. Now I've got a for real Z stovepipe. Lock, rip, jiggle, metal on metal, reload the gun, back ready to go again, and you cleared your stovepipe. Guys, I'm Daniel. Keep those stovepipes clear. Thanks for watching.